this video, I'm going to be bringing you an Indianapolis Colts offensive ebook. This has been probably the number one or at least top two or three offense of Madden 24. And so I wanted to bring you kind of a entire comprehensive Colts offensive ebook if you guys have have not experienced it. Now, if you guys want to get some of my other offensive and defensive ebooks as we kind of prepare for Madden 25 and for college football, all of my offensive defensive ebooks for both Madden and college football 25 are going to be on a new platform. Now, uh, we've been using Patreon for the last couple of years. We're going to be shifting to the platform called School. I believe that that's going to make, make a big difference in your guys' experience. It's going to be able just to put everything Everything in a nice package for you so that you'll be able to access the site a lot better. It's going to be a lot better for Q&A and getting your questions answered. So if you guys want to join us over on school to take your Madden or college football game to the next level, join us at school.com slash Cody Bauer. I'll put a link to that in the description below. You can go uh, click on that, sign up for just $10 and you'll get access to everything. All of the offensive and defensive ebooks that we've already done, as well as everything that we're going to continue to do uh, as we kind of head towards the Madden 20 and college football 25 season. So if you want to sign up for that, that link's going to be down in the description below. For our settings in this offense, what we're going to do is we're going to have our passing type on placement and accuracy, our passing slowdown off, freeform reticle max distance is going to be on near, and freeform reticle speed is going to be on 20 out of 20. Reticle visibility is visible, meter visibility is user only, and then some gameplay helpers more so for the defensive side of the ball, but auto flip defensive play call is going to be off, defensive ball hawk is going to be on, Heat Seeker Assist is going to be off. Switch Assist is going to be off. And Controlled Play Art is going to be off. Also, if you guys want to stop your camera from shaking, I believe that it might be in, I don't know if it's visual feedback, um, but it's basically dynamic camera effects. You want to make sure that that is turned off. So as you see here, if I go down all the way, it should give me that dynamic camera effects. You just want to set that to off, and then we'll get into the audibles. The main formation in the Indianapolis Colts offensive ebook is going to be this gun bunch offset and this gun bunch strong nasty. Our audibles that we're going to want to set for uh, this offense here is we're going to want to go in and we're going to make sure that we have the play spacing or I'm sorry, smash return. Smash return is super effective. It's a great play. We want to have access to that in our audibles. If you guys want to have a run audible, be my guess. Vert's halfback under, PA read are all both are, are all really good plays. What I like to do in this inside zone split audible slot is either use the play corner out dig, or you can also use utilize the play uh, curl flat. One other play that is worth kind of an honorable mention, and we are going to be giving setups for this, is the play dig return. It's really good for a no huddle in a situation where maybe you're going into the red zone and you need a short yardage, uh, a short yardage play. The dig return is really good. But anyways, we're going to be putting curl flat in that position. The next formation we're going to be going over it, uh, together is Bunch Strong Nasty. Now, this is one of the most versatile formations in all of Madden. Really good formation this year. The audibles we're going to set is mesh flat spot. We're going to take inside zone out, and it actually has one of the best bubble screens in the game, the RPO read bubble. We have the play wide trail, and then this play PA bunt shot. Now, what I like to do is if you want to have that PA play in there, you certainly can, but dagger has become kind of the best play for that position. So those are the top two formations that we're going to be utilizing in this offense. Another kind of the third level or third tier formation is this trips tight end offset. Super effective little formation here. What we're going to do is we're going to put the RPO alert wide receiver, or we're going to put X under in this slot. We're going to put the RPO alert wide receiver screen in this slot. Verticals is going to be here, and then PA crossers is going to be kind of the, the, the key plays for this offense. Trips tight end offset week. We don't really have to set any major audibles here. This formation is kind of set up for us. The main play we're going to be utilizing is this RPO read bubble and as well as PA flood and verticals outside zone. If you wanted to change outside zone for this RPO pin alert bubble, um, I think that's a good play. Halfback power is also a really good play. I would probably choose either the pin alert bubble or the halfback power. So that's what we're going to rock with. Uh, that's what we're going to rock with here. And then the last formation that we're going to talk about as far as like a, a, a key or mainstay passing formation that we want to have access to audibles in is this bunch open offset. So for the bunch open offset, as you can see, we have the play dig return. We have the play RPO read bubble. We have the play flood. The only play that we're going to, to basically change here 
is we're going to put either this RPO zone alert screen or the fake screen wheel. Um, personally, I prefer this alert screen. I just think it's a little bit better. You could also utilize this double stack um, kind of again as just a simple audible. This RPO read FL screen would be the main play you wanted to set in here. But in general, that's kind of the main formations from the Colts playbook as far as a passing uh, attack is considered this tight Y off is is actually decent um, I think a lot of people kind of sleep on this formation the one thing I would say is you want to have the play post wheel drag in your audibles you want to have the play um, where's it at here the not wide receiver under you can have wide receiver under or flanker spot probably wide receiver under and then shallow cross and then this RPO zone alert Omaha is pretty decent uh, but you can also have the RPO or I'm sorry the zero one trap so couple different options uh, just in terms of what you want to do from a passing perspective, but tight Y off is a formation worth at least mentioning in the, in the ebook here. Now the main under center formation that we're going to be utilizing this, the main red zone formation we're going to be utilizing is the single back wing slot and we're going to be audibly into wing tight. So those are kind of our mainstay formations. What you want to do in this is you want to go ahead and sub in a tight end at um, either this bubble screen position or this outside position. So we're going to put a tight end out here so that we can audible into wing tight. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to have the stretch alert bubble is going to be kind of our main play that we come out in. And the only audible you really need to set here is the zone alert bubble. Everything else is pretty much set up for you. If you wanted to uh, at the stick and nod, you could put the play mesh spot. That's a pretty good passing play as well. So that kind of give you some options there. And then single back wing tight. Here's what's really important here in this position. We want the stretch. We want the 26 duo. And then from there, halfback dive, of course. And then one passing play or the jet sweep. I personally prefer the jet sweep because this formation is probably the best running formation on the goal line. And then one other little tip for you guys is if you're coming out in wing tight, what I would recommend is putting a running back in this position. What that's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to audible into goal line. And then you could have like QB sneak. If you ever have a good look for a QB sneak, you could have, um, you know, fullback dive, power O, and then maybe one passing play like uh, PA spot or PA waggle. So those are some decent options for you. But those are the audibles for the offense. And the plays that we're going to be coming out in pretty much every single time is going to be the double post out of bunch offset. The first setup of double post is a really simple setup. All we're going to do is we're just going to streak the point receiver and we're going to snap the ball pretty much as fast as we possibly can. And this play has a lot of different options for you. The first read you always want to look out here. If they're not playing hard flat coverage, you want to take that quick flat to the outside, super effective little route to get uh, kind of some some things happening for your offense. Now, please notice with this setup, you can run this on both hash marks, but for the main version, we're gonna run this with our bunch to the wide side of the field. Now, the next route that we're gonna really look for is this running back out of the backfield. As you saw right there, there's a little pocket that you can hit if that yellow zone uh, kind of backs up a little bit more. So you see here, you know, kind of right in that little window. That is a super underrated throw to make on this play. And it's going to pay big dividends for you because what you're going to see here is this is also really good for beating pressure. And it forces their user to kind of stay underneath of the play to be able to handle the running back route. What that's going to do is it's going to create kind of a two-way window or a two-window opportunity to be able to throw to be able to throw your post over the top for a big play so what you'll see here let me grab cover four I bump the timeout button so you'll see here so here's cover four and then if they stay underneath on the running back what you'll see is we can throw this post we can throw it right here which is one option on the play you certainly can you can throw it right in that middle kind of point of the field but the other window that you have against cover four and cover three is if you wait on this route, you'll see that that quarter is going to stay down. And then this can become basically a one play score against cover four or cover three. It's, it's a big play potential against cover four or cover three. 
And so the way that they're going to have to defend that is they are going to have to take this guy on the le on the solo side and they're going to have to put him in a deep half. So if they put him in a deep half, what's going to happen is he's is then your your C route is going to get open super late right on that sideline for a little possession catch against the coverage. The same thing is true. It's a little bit more true if you're facing uh, a, a cover three. So again here, you'll see they kind of stay underneath. Well, if they don't run with that post route, as you see, this is a big, big, uh, big play against cover three pretty much every single time. So the other thing that's going to, so what's going to have to happen is they are going to have to play really cover two on the solo side. Um, and it could come from a couple different variations. So like, as you see right here, this curl flat doesn't do a terrible job. As you see over there on the left side, like the stock curl flat zone does not do a terrible job of defending the C route. Another thing that doesn't do a, a terrible job of defending the C route is this kind of a stock cloud flat. So you see here kind of that basic cover two cloud flat is going to defend that. And then that deep half is going to go and defend the, uh, the deep post route. Right? So what you're going to see a lot of people start to do is they're going to curl flat that left hand side of the, of the, of the play. So if they do something like that, one of my favorite other variations of double post uh, is really just to check in a smash return. Because when they start to do curl flats over there on that left side, this setup at a smash return is really effective. All you're gonna do is streak your solo receiver, you're gonna drag your tight end, slot apprentice post your slot receiver, and then block your running back. And what you'll see here is this curl flat is really gonna get manipulated by those two routes that crow flat is going to be put in a position where he's going to have to choose, am I guarding am I guarding the tight end or am I guarding the post? Now, most of the time, what's going to happen is he's going to kind of stay on the tight end, and then that's going to allow this post to be able to come open over, over on that left-hand side there. So to me, that's a really, really good setup out of smash return, and there's other things that it can beat as well. We didn't cover man coverage for our first setup out of double post, if they do run um, man to man, the running back route is pretty effective uh, against man coverage. So you can really manipulate them with that simple running back route. Another setup out of double post that is really a little bit better for man coverage specifically would be to drag the solo receiver and block the running back. What this is going to do is it's going to create a more true kind of shallow cross concept. And if they play you in man coverage, oftentimes what's going to happen is your double post post route is going to be wide open for a touchdown. Again, unless they're playing cover two man, and I'll show you how to manipulate that as well. But as you see, against cover one or cover zero, this is going to be wide open for a big play downfield. So let's say that they are playing you in some kind of super aggressive, and this is becoming a little bit popular lately, shade underneath man. So if they are playing you in shade underneath man, take a look at this tight end route. You're going to see that when it cuts up field, oftentimes he's going to get separation here. He didn't actually get a ton. Um, and if you ever get in trouble, you know, just try to click on, go make a play. But oftentimes that tight end will get some pretty crazy separation against two man under. So let me try to show that again. Let me actually give it a, a more of an accurate shade of a two man under. So what you'll see here, see how he's super underneath tight end cuts up field. That's more what you're going to see. And you're able to manipulate the cover two man that way as well. Now, again, cover two man, we're still getting the same basic high low. So let me explain that real quick. So the user is going to be here. He's going to be sitting down here and he's going to have to make a choice. Am I going to go guard the post or am I going to go guard the drag? So if he chooses to guard the drag and stay underneath, then take a look at your post route. You can possession catch this in front of that deep half defender pretty, pretty easily. All right. So those are some really great ways to manipulate man coverage. Another thing about smash return, I actually think smash return is decent for man coverage because you have a lot of man beating routes. Your drag wins, your post wins, your return route wins. So what you'll see here is this tight end drag is really the best route. And as you see, when he cuts across the middle, super open to be able to attack kind of that cover, uh, that cover one or cover zero man coverage. So then what are they going to have to do to stop that? They're going to have to run that way with their defender. And then oftentimes, you know, it might be a coverage like what you see right here, which I think is actually a really good coverage. But 
against Smash Return specifically, it's going to struggle because what you'll see here is this little return route is pretty much always going to win. So if they don't have a zone over the middle of the field, that return route is going to be super effective against man coverage. So that's the play Smash Return. And then we didn't even show this. The best route on the play is probably the return route. But the second best route is really this, um, this post route. So what you see here is this is going to be wide open. Now, before we go any further, I did want to cover some pass protection for you guys uh, in this in this little ebook here, talking about some of the meta blitzes that you're going to face, and, so that you are able to be you know kind of prepared and equipped. So, one of the main stay defenses that you're going to see is this free safety zone blitz, baseline and press, and basically we're going to try to get this a gap pressure. So. This is pretty much the standard setup of this at this point. And a lot of times this four, four man will come right down the A gap. If it doesn't come in with the four man, oftentimes you're going to see what your opponent's going to do is they are going to go to a five man variation of this in which they blitz the slot corner off the left. And as you see, if you send five out, this is a really, really good blitz. So the best way that I know to pick up this blitz from uh, from Dollar, and there are a couple different ones that we want to cover, but they're all basically the same pickup. Essentially, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to slide protect. This is for Dollar. You're going to want to slide protect to the right, block your running back, and ID the slot corner on either the left or ID the slot corner on the right. We'll come back to the one on the right, but for now, we'll just ID here. And as you see, we're able to pick up the blitz and be able to you know five out or uh, be able to send a lot of people out. Now, let's say that you want to send five out against this blitz and you think they're maybe only sending the four man. If they're only sending the four man version of the blitz, just by sliding right, you can quick hike pretty quickly. And a lot of times this will pick it up. It's not 100%. Please understand when you five out, your pass protection is, is, is definitely worse, okay? So if we want to five out, let's say we're facing this version of the blitz. Whoops, did not mean to do that. Reset the linebackers here. So we're facing this version of the blitz, a simple slide to the right. The, the beauty of that is you're going to be able to quick hike. So by sliding to the right, you want to slide to the right as soon as you break the huddle. And then you can do one hot route like so and go. And oftentimes this will block the majority of the way that that dollar blitz is going to work. OK, so that's the first version of the dollar blitz. Now, if you want to if you want to block this, this kind of five man where they bring the safety down like this right here. What I like to do is a same basic thing, slide to the right, block the running back. In this look here, we're actually going to, because the line is, defensive line is spread, we're going to go ahead and we're going to ID the left side outside corner. Oftentimes, that will give us enough, enough width to be able to defend or to be able to pick up both the blitzing slot corner and the blitzing safety. Now, if you know for a fact that they're going to run this version of the blitz where they're sending the safety, go ahead and ID the safety. Okay, that's the, that's the best way to pick up the safety, but it doesn't always pick up DB fire, which we're going to talk about uh, right now. So as you can see there, we're able to pick up the blitz pretty easily. Again, the general, the general template, the general starting point is to slide to the right, block the running back, and then try to pick up the left side with the running back, okay? So let's talk about DB Fire. So there's a couple different versions of DB Fire that you're going to face. This first one is kind of the, the base align. It's, it's, I'm using spinner, but it's very similar. So what you're going to do with this is slide right, block running back, and ID this corner. And what you should see here is if you step up, you're going to be able to block that blitz, and you're going to be able to you know, basically get a big play, especially if they're playing the cover zero version. What a lot of people also like to do at this point in the year is they really like to essentially send five like so, but they want to, you know, they want you to think they're maybe sending the safety blitz. So if you were to ID this safety on, oh, why it's not letting me move this guy. Uh, if you were to ID the safety, okay, this does not always pick up. See how it doesn't always pick up that edge pressure? The key is if they send the dollar, the DB fire pressure, the biggest thing you can do to make it a little bit easier to pick up is to take your quarterback and step up in the pocket. So by sliding to the right, we're going to trust that this A gap is going to be picked up. And then when we see, oh, it's DB fire, okay, we're going to step up, step up, step up, step up, and it buys us enough time to be able to make a read. The next defense I want to show you how to pick up consistently 
is the 4-3 even 6-1. My opinion, this is the best defense in the game right now, and it's the best blitz in the game right now. So this five-man blitz is a little easier to pick up than the six-man blitz. So if they are sending five, oftentimes they're going to send five off of the running back side. So as you see here, this would be an example of a defense that a lot of people would look to run against Bunch or maybe something like this. So how do we pick up this blitz? What we're going to do is we're just simply going to block the running back. And what you'll see here is it will pick up that edge pressure. Where I think things start to get a little dicey with 6-1 is when you start slide protecting. If you start slide protecting, a lot of times those gap pressures become a lot better. All right. Now, another version or another method to picking up 6-1, especially the five-man blitz, is to use a block and release route from your tight end. So we're going to put them on a block and release drag and maybe run a route combo like this, for example. What you'll see is this block and release drag will kind of sit for a second, and then he'll be able to pick up the blitz. And if he is blocking, he might not go out, but at least the blitz is picked up. Now, you could also just block your tight end against this, and a lot of times this will do the trick too. So if I block my tight end, you'll see here, it's just a lot better of a pickup. This is what makes, I think, Bunch so good that we have the ability to block our running back. We also have the ability to block our tight end on opposite sides. So the meta or the main method, if we want to really send some pressure, is they're going to send six. If you do this block and release method with your tight end, I find often, as you see right there, it's able to pick it up. So oftentimes that block tight end is enough to be able to pick this up for long enough for you to make a read with your with your routes, right? So what I would recommend is if I was facing 6-1, I would want to block my tight end a lot or use the block and release routes. And then from there, you know, maybe just do some simple plays, you know, something like this. And oftentimes, as you see, kind of get that blocked up and then we're able to put the tight end on a route. Now, if you if you don't like the inconsistencies of the block and release, because sometimes they pick them up, in my opinion, and sometimes they don't, it just kind of depends on how long that blitz is coming in. They go ahead and just block the tight end. Just by blocking the tight end, as you see, I think this is the best way to best, best method to pick up the 6 1 blitz. Now, if you want to pick up the 6 1 blitz with the running back and they're sending six, um, my recommendation would be to slide right and block your running back and then ID this guy on the left and as you see here sometimes this picks it up perfectly sometimes it does not and a lot of it has to do with how fast the players are that are actually running the blitz but those are the pass protection methods that i would recommend now before we go any further i do want to quickly remind you guys that we do have all of our offensive and defensive ebooks available available on our new site over at school.com. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description if you guys want to check that out. It's really the best place, in my opinion, to become a better Madden player because it gets you access to all of the ebooks, all of the updates to the ebooks. And with the school page, we also have a nice area for you to be able to ask your questions and kind of learn from an entire community. So if you guys want to get access to that, again, $10 a month, and the link's down below. All right, so we've kind of covered a lot of the main plays. We're going to be going over one of my other plays here, and that is curl flat. So there's a lot of ways to run curl flat that are effective, but I think the best method for curl flat is to use the tight end apprentice. So we're going to streak our outside bunch receiver. We're going to corner route our tight end. We're going to block our running back for this play. And then we're going to drag our backside receiver. So we already we just kind of went over some really good, you know, pass protection when we're utilizing that blocked running back. And now we're going to be able to use this to manipulate zone on the right side. And so this is the double corner play from Bunch. It's super good. And what we're really looking for is if they are in cover four or cover three zone, then oftentimes this tight end is going to be wide open. All right. So again, this is out of curl flat. We're putting the tight end on a corner, streaking the outside bunch receiver, and then we can set up a protection. So a simple slide right, block the running back, and then we can kind of go about our business in terms of our hot routes. But let's say they run, we just showed you cover four. Let's say they run cover three. What's going to happen? Well, pretty much the same thing. That third's going to get pulled by that corner, and then that short corner is going to come underneath it for a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice yard gainer. So we're able to manipulate cover four with that. And then now let's say a lot of people have started to kind of do this more and more. They're going to go to a cover two coverage so that that cloud flat will defend that short corner. 
Well, that will defend the short corner, but now what you'll see is that this deep corner route is going to get over the top for a big play against that coverage. So it's a super hard uh, play to defend whenever you are running zone coverage. Now, this play, if you're running man coverage, I would say this play is not the best against man, but it can work against man. And oftentimes what I see is either your drag's going to be open or your tight end corner is going to be the main routes that you're going to want to throw from this. So again, you know, this is the first variation of curl flat that I like to use. And it's really mainly for zone. If they do run man, as you see, a lot of times your tight end will come open. But because of the, the way the routes kind of run, especially against press man, it could be a little muddy against man coverage. Okay. Now, we have not covered verticals yet. And I would be crazy not to cover verticals. So verticals, there's a lot you could do with this play. It's a very important play to master in bunch. And the first setup is just stock. We're just going to run this play super stock. Our first read is going to be this little like quick throw over here to the right side. I have found for myself that throwing this ball, if you want to kind of limit the incompletions and the inaccurates, because what a lot of people will do to stop the double corner is they'll put a cloud flat over there on the right side. So this wheel route can be really effective for basically manipulating that. If you find yourself throwing a lot of incompletions on that wheel route, try highballing it and it will be a lot better for you, okay? Just try simply highballing it, and you'll see here, like a highball, it just puts it out there a little bit more, you get a little bit better animation, and you just wanna highball up and outside, and it'll lead them upfield. So, as you see, that's one of the better plays, uh, one of the better ways for manipulating zone blitzes. So again, let's talk about just kind of the meta blitz that you'll see. A lot of people like to run. Here's another blitz we haven't really covered a lot. This is Spinner. And Spinner is really one of the best defenses in the game for Bunch. So what a lot of people like to do would be a defensive coverage that looks something like this right here, right? This is a pretty common, you know, uh, heavy pressure play. So what you can do to attack this is call verticals. And essentially, this tight end wheel is going to kind of get right in that little pocket over there on the right-hand side. Now, I'll give you a little bit better of an example. So because we take the running back here and I'll show you kind of what that would look like. So again, I think this is a really good coverage for bunch, but it, it does have some holes. So the main hole is that this hook curl is going to come super down, super hard. So the user oftentimes will have to climb to the crosser and he'll play more like a mid read. Okay. That's how, that's how most people will use this. So if that's how most people use it, what you'll see here is that's where our tight end becomes wide open in that seam area of the field. The verticals have back under is what makes bunch, I think, unbelievably effective. It, it's the it's the main play that uh, kind of takes the takes the formation up a lot. So let's say that their their user defender says, okay, well I don't want to give that up, so I'm going to go guard the tight end myself, right? Well, that's fine, but oftentimes, especially in zone blitzes. That hook curl on the left side is going gonna, is gonna to really come down on the running back. So because of that, what we want to do here is as we look to the right, we see, oh, that little vertical uh, little crosser is going to be wide open in that little area. Now, another thing that is important to illustrate is what you just saw, where let's say they don't shade down. Let's say this guy kind of stays a little more like vertical. If he stays a little bit more vertical up into that crosser window and kind of closes that, then what we want to do is we want to check down to the running back. So again, here you see this little quick throw right here, that little window, super important to be able to hit that. And we've been hitting that out of double posts. We've been hitting that out of, you know, this play as well. So they're, they're typically going to shade underneath. Once they start to, to shade underneath a lot, that's where this crosser becomes super open uh, right over the top of the safety. So you see here, maybe just step a little bit to the left and you see that I can throw that over on the left-hand side. Now, another setup for verticals that is important to discuss, a little bit better for quick passing is, and, and really better for blitzes in general, is let's say you're facing a lot of this five-man pressure, right? So you're facing a lot of this five-man pressure, and typically their users kind of baiting over here to the right side. We can play some games here on this left-hand side. So what I like to do on the left here, a couple different options. One of the easiest ones that I think is most underrated is take the running back 
and we're just going to put him on either a wheel or a swing pass or a flat. Um, and what's going to happen is that hook curl will play him, but he won't play him once he gets to the outside. So I wouldn't put him on an out route. I'd put him on a wheel route before I'd put him on an out route. Let me show you what a wheel route's going to do real quick. So if I put him on a wheel route, this is kind of what it would it would mean. You are going to have to, if you put him on the wheel route, you're going to have to expect to throw this a lot quicker, right? But if you see him blitz, you throw the wheel. You see how he gets out there super flat and that yellow can't really play him. So what they're going to start to do, and this is why, you know, you want to kind of think through what are the possible adjustments that they can do to you. What they're going to start to do to stop that is they're going to do a couple different variations. Oftentimes it's what's known as the scissor adjustment. So the scissor adjustment would look something like what you see right here, where we're going to basically utilize this man coverage to take away the wheel route. When they do that, um, as soon as the running back kind of wheels upfield, it's going to be a touchdown. So you'll see right here, if I could just have like a second to throw this, I could put this guy on an out route and that way it leaves the running back kind of isolated. And what you'll see here is when he turns up field, it's a touchdown. Now, again, I didn't get the ball off and that's why, you know, we got to do a little bit to block the blitz, of course, which I'll show that a good blitz can obviously, you know, it can, it can make things hard for you offensively. That's why blitzing is so important defensively, but let's say we just get a little bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and slide right here, and we're going to utilize this running back wheel. And what you'll see here is the second he cuts up field, he's open, right? Second he cuts up field, he's wide open. Now, the other thing you might have seen and might have noticed on that is not just that, but when they do the scissor adjustment, something else that's important to kind of like think through here for a second, when they do the scissor adjustment, if they're playing zone on the back end, there's nobody to guard the crosser. So what you see I could throw this inside pass lead, and now that crosser is potentially a one-place score as well. So that's why verticals is so versatile because it's super hard to guard in zone, right, under the umbrella of zone coverage. Another coverage that is very popular that people will do is what I call roll coverage, where they'll roll over the top like this. So same basic strategy, and again, we're going to play games, but a lot of times what will happen is the user will end up going to the tight end here. So that deep path is going to be helpful for kind of countering the, the crosser. This is where the running back streak is really effective because if there's no yellow zone here, I could just throw this right here. Easy, easy, easy yardage. Easy yardage with that route. Super simple read and uh, super, super effective. So that's another setup from verticals that I think is important. Another one that I really think is kind of an underrated setup from the Colts bunch is to turn this into Durham. So something you can do is you can turn this into kind of the Jets bunch strong. So what you would do is you would drag your tight end, you would slot apprentice post your slot receiver, motion your running back for, to the right. You need to motion him and let him set before you put him on the streak and then put him on a streak. And now we've just recreated Durham, right? From the Jets playbook, super effective. I've got a full ebook on that on the school page. That links again is going to be down in the description. But as you can see, that does a really good job of kind of opening up. And again, back to kind of talking about we want to make them hard flat here. If they're cloud flatting, if they're a lot of people like to do that because that does a good job of defending the C route. If they're doing that, then what are they they're going to be in a position. So you see here if I if I hot route him too early, see how he's on a streak. You don't want to do that. <laughs> so if he ever does that, you can just put him on a ghost route or something that gets him in the seam. But you see here, this cloud flat backs up, backs up, backs up. And then I can throw my tight end underneath for a pretty easy game. All right. So that is a lot about verticals. Um, there's a lot more to be discussed about verticals. But uh, and, and one of those things that I think is important, I really don't want you to sleep on this setup out of verticals right here. This setup is super effective because we're able to really space the field well. That flat is a good route in, sp in light of the fact that a lot of people are putting that safety on the left side on a hook curl, and a lot of people, they're putting a deep half to that safety or to that corner, right? So a standard adjustment for bunch at these, this, this point in the year is going to be something like this. This is pretty standard, and then, they, and then what they do is they take the scout on the left and they put him on a half. Right. So the best way to manipulate this defense right here 
is this vertical setup that I'm showing you where we're just going to take our table route. Now, another great way to utilize this setup right here would be if you have a slot apprentice to put the slot receiver on a slot apprentice post. The reason this is gonna be a little bit better than the crosser is it's gonna just space out just a little bit better. And so it, it makes it a little bit easier to throw it. It's a, it, the KOs, the deep zone KOs are not as big of a problem, you know, if you do it that way, all right? So that is uh, verticals half back under. P read is kind of a unique play. Um, it's kind of similar to smash return. There, the main reason you would call PA read is if you're playing a blitz, you don't like, for example, spinner is one of the better blitzes in the game. So if you're playing a blitz like this, where they're sending, you know, six a lot, PA reads a really good play because what you can do out of this is you get play action blocking. So, and then you're going to just block your running back. So by blocking your running back, it's going to block most blitzes. And then you're going to kind of freestyle around this. So one of my favorite play setups um, would just simply be to curl this guy on the right-hand side and then to streak the solo receiver. This is just a simple Y-cross setup, but it's really effective, you know, when they're sending everybody at you. Of course, I shouldn't have thrown that that, that late in the play, but you see the idea. So that's, that's an option. A lot of people, when they run spinner, they're going to do a setup like this. Uh, I mean, very, very much – like a lot of people like to do something like this out of spinner with maybe a vertical hook here to the right side. And then they're just going to use her. They're going to use her the flat themselves. So again, if we go to PA read, right, we could do a setup, you know, something like this. And then we could just drag the tight end. And now we're kind of in that same thing, but we have play action blocking that can be a little bit more effective for, uh, for, for defenses. So that's kind of the standard ways in which we're going to run bunch for the most part. Um, at this point in the year, bunch to the wide side is typically best. There are some good setups for bunch to the, sh to the short side, which I did want to cover briefly here. And it's really this play Z spot and go is, is really the main play. We can also cover curl flat. But the play Z spot and go is a very good play due to the C route. This is where we're going to kind of start to leverage our solo receiver a little bit more. So the best way to do this is we're going to wheel our running back. And as you notice, in double post, the C route's a little shallower. When you use Z spot and go, it's a little deeper. And so this is a way we can run double corners because we can streak our outside bunch receiver and we have a flood. And what I like to do with this play is block and release, drag my tight end. It's going to help me pick up a lot of pressure. And I have this kind of, this play is going to take a long time to develop. But as you can see, to the short side, I have streak corner. Um, that's really effective for manipulating cover three, cover four to the short side. And then to the wide side, I have, um, I have C route, wheel route. So the wheel route is going to pull that outside quarter. And that C route, as you see, he's going to be able to be thrown. I got to free form that, but he's going to be able to be thrown deep to the left sideline. So what this allows me to do offensively is be able to attack both sidelines in one play setup, both sidelines in one play setup. And then have the have the tight end kind of be that you know basically a check down over the middle. So you see here, boom, throw that on the sideline. Got to catch it, but in general you see the idea. That C route is deeper than the one out of double post, which makes it a little bit more helpful when attacking kind of that side of the field. And you can do the same thing with double post. Um, let's say you're playing somebody that wants to run a lot of double flat. So we get this a lot, especially on 6-1. But I'll show this out of dollar. Um, I'll show this out of dollar. So if we come out in double post, what you'll see here is, let's say they want to run double Mabel. Okay, If they want to run this defense, what's going to happen is this double post route is going to get underneath of a 30-yard cloud because it's a little bit shallower, as you see, and then you're just going to possession catch that on the sideline against that coverage. So there are some reasons to run short side bunch, but in general, wide side bunch to me is really more, not better, but there's, it's just a deeper playbook. So here you see we're going to run uh, some short side bunch for you. We're going to take curl flat. We're going to put the outside receiver now on the corner the tight end on a streak, and then we're going to run double corners like this. So the reason you would run double corners like this is because this short side corner is going to do a really good job 
as you see here, of kind of, again, now Mabel, Mabel actually plays this pretty decently, but if they're playing base press, right, so they, it's very difficult for them to play Mabel coverage when those outside corners are pressed. So this would be a reason you would want to run curl flat. But what will happen here is with the slot apprentice corner, it's a better short side corner. So you see here, see how that, see how that kind of spaces out well? And then you're able to throw that kind of almost back shoulder to the sideline against cover four, against cover three. Now, what's really important as well is to think about what if they do, you know, what if they, what if they do like double flat, double flat short side, then you do have, to me, like this, this, this corner to the right, it, it's a tighter throw. Sometimes that curl, see how he can sometimes get over, but see how tight of a throw that is. So if you're getting a lot of double flat, double Mabel coverage, what I like to do is I'll come out short side because they will like, okay, they, they can, okay, the, the, the Mabel's going to work really, really well, right? Because um, it does. It works well for a lot of stuff. It works really well against this, this bunch. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to curl flat, and then we're going to flip the play, and we're going to quickly you know, set up our hot routes to look something like this. And what you'll see is this R1 route, R1 corner, is going to clear that 30-yard cloud flat and be able to be a big play for you over the top. All right, so that is that is kind of the general uh, the general idea. One thing we didn't cover yet that I did think is kind of important because you do see a pretty decent amount of double Mabel uh, at this point in the year, and occasionally it comes from cover two, cover four, but most of the time it's going to be these deep half zones. So if you want to manipulate the deep half zone, what you want to do is you want to use your solo wide receiver on a skinny post. And then from there, it's really whatever you want to do as far as route combos. What I like to do the most is this back to the smash return setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to post this guy. We're going to wheel the running back. And then we're going to slot apprentice post the slot receiver or drag him either way. Okay. And what you'll see is this tight end corner will pull that deep half. And then you can throw this over the top for a big play against cover two. Now, obviously, kind of a specific adjustment that you do want to be aware of. Now, on that topic, I did want to cover one other thing that is really common when people are playing bunch. They will turn their match coverage on, and they're going to base out of the spinner defense. I actually think this is a really good way to play bunch. But in general, it, it pretty much centers around the solo receiver being or this, this corner being on an outside third. So if we want to manipulate that outside third, what we're going to do, and typically your coverage would, I mean, it could just look, it could look a lot of different ways, but in general, let's just do, you know, something like this. So a lot of times you get man coverage across the board, and then on that solo side, you get a third. If that's the case, what I like to do is go to smash return. We're going to post the solo receiver, we're going to drag, right? We're just going to set up smash return like we normally would, but now we're using a post instead of a streak. What this will do is this outside third will not, he will kind of, he, he kind of matched him better than he was supposed to. He will match him, but he won't stay with him the whole, whole way, all right? He won't stay with him the whole way. So if we have a little bit, we, we got to be a little bit more patient with it. But again, a lot of people like to run this, this coverage. And it could look, you know, a lot of people like to do just this right here with a, with a, with a um, outside third on the solo side. So if they do that, and what you'll see here is if you wait on this long enough, you see that right there gets wide open. And this is a big play potential as well. So those are different methods that I like to use to be able to, you know, manipulate the, the defense really, really well. That's just bunch offset, boys. <laughs> um, there's a lot of other plays that uh, that I wanted to go through today. We're going to go through a couple out of bunch strong nasty, and this is going to be in the context of being audible to. So this is like a you know kind of standard way you would play. You would come out and double post, and then you would audible to whatever you wanted to call. So let's say we want to go to dagger. All we're going to do is we're going to slot apprentice 
crosser, the slot receiver. Our first read is a snap throw seam streak. If that's not open, then we're just reading our high low between our crosser and our drag. And then our check down is that backside dig, right? Super simple play, but super effective. I find this setup right here to be really good as long as you have some time in the pocket. That's the whole point of blocking the running back. And then your crosser, I find just pass leading it down with no free form and waiting until he's super close to the sideline to be the best way to throw this against KOs. Some people like to try to free form this. Some people like to try to high ball this. So, you know, kind of use your judgment. But let's say the user decides, okay, I'm going to go defend the crosser. And then that's going to leave this tight end kind of right in that little pocket. It's a really nice route combo. One of the better route combos in the game. And it um, it's really good. So now to defend that, they have to put – they basically have to double flat to the left, right? So it could look something like this, which means they can't double flat to the right. So this is where kind of the game can be, we can be uh, kind of played. We're going to go to mesh flat spot, streak the slot, tie it in apprentice corner. And then if you want to block your running back, you can. You can also leave him on the route. And then I like on this backside to put him on an in route. I think that's super good. So you see here, and now it's going to space out really well, and that's going to be wide open. So what a lot of people like to do is they're going to go user the tight end. So let's kind of just illustrate what that would look like. So, all right, we're going to go user the tight end. Again, they're trying to load up to kind of stop dagger, right? So they're kind of keying in on the tight end. If the tight end goes to the corner, they're going to take him. If you see that, this is where – your backside in, as you see right here, it's going to be wide open, and you can kind of take advantage of the coverage this way. Another thing that's important to cover is we are wide side. So let's say you're getting a lot of this right here where you're getting that double flat type of look. You go to mesh flat spot. This corner to circle is a little bit is, – is a wide corner. I'll talk about that here in a minute, but what you'll see is this circle corner, a lot of times he can clear a 30-yard clap because you're running from the short side to the wide side. If you have um, if you have slot apprentice, which I do think, I really think you only need tight end, tight end apprentice and slot apprentice to be super good in bunch this year, but uh, to get everything you need. But if you go to mesh flat spot, another thing you could do is you could run it just like curl flat. So you can just change who's on the corner. And what this is going to do is just give them a little bit more space to run against that cover two coverage. And you see, it just gets a little deeper than he did previously. Next setup I want to cover out of the Bunch Strong Nasty really can be ran out of any play. Um, but we're gonna show we're gonna show it out of dagger. The reason I like dagger is just because it's got a nice clear out on the left. So we're gonna go to dagger here. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna slot apprentice post the slot receiver. We're gonna drag the tight end, flat the outside bunch receiver, and streak the running back. This is our variation of Durham. Super effective, and if they back up, you got that running back streak a lot. Running back streak's going to be open a lot. So what are they going to do to stop that? They're going to shade underneath, and they're going to try to use her or sit on the running back route. If they try to use her or sit on the running back route, then what you're going to be able to do is you are going to be able to hit your slot post, which is going to be thrown over here, and you see how much space is available if they are not double flatting or double mabling. So super, super effective uh, little play, little mini scheme here. Another play that is really important that we do need to cover is this RPO read bubble. Um, it's just a super good bubble screen, super good bubble screen. You want to juke inside once you catch it. Not a whole lot to explain here. The one thing I will say that's a little different than Jets. So uh, what you can do with an RPO read bubble, I did not mean to do that, sorry. Uh, what you can do with an RPO read bubble is you can keep it with your quarterback. So let's say you can hand it to your running back. The way you would hand it to your running back is just hold the X button. But if you don't hold the X button and you don't hit the circle button, then you're just going to be able to run with your quarterback. So if you want to do that, if, that, if they give you a good look, to do that, you can run. Obviously, you risk fumbling, so you want to be sliding or you want to be on conservative, but that is an option as well uh, within the play. So the cool part about these RPO read bubbles is I just think the bubble screens are a lot more effective because you can run with your quarterback. It puts the defenders in a lot more conflict, which is then going to ultimately open up more things for you. Another setup we didn't cover a ton in terms of its ability and capabilities against the zone is this double post setup that I think you have to know about. 
block your running back, streak your slot, drag this guy. Really good setup. You have this kind of snap throw to that drag, but you still have the capability here, as you see, to burn coverage over the top. So that drag, especially if they're pressing, is still going to hold that third, so they're going to have to go guard that. So if the user decides, okay, I'm going to go take away that post so that that's not a problem, then you're going to be able to easily just check down here, juke up field, and get some easy yardage that way. The next play we're going to be going over out of the Y, uh, or the sorry, the bunch strong nasty is the play Y trail. A couple different variations and setups from this that are super effective. One of them is basically a drag, a flat, and then a ghost route. Really good horizontal spacing concept. This is designed to be a one play touchdown against cover four or cover three. When they press, as you see, this this post is just going to run all the way across, and it's going to be at least a big play. It might be a one-play touchdown. may just be a big play, but it's really effective against cover four. So, again, this is a baseline press cover four, and I go to wide trail, and what you see here, and I, do, I don't think it matters as much for this hash marks, but in general, once the post kind of crosses that deep safety, you're just going to throw it to the sideline. I like to possession catch it if I can, just because it can oftentimes protect against KOs. If they were to run cover three, if they were run uh, cover three coverage against you, then what you'll be able to do here is this cover or this post will take. It's a little bit more open against cover three. That cover that time he actually kind of came back pretty a lot better than he normally does. Let me show that one more time here, and I'll also show you a really cool play that you can use, um, kind of like a rollout play. But in general, this is it. So see, once he kind of crosses right there, you're going to throw it up into the outside, rack catch that, and especially against cover three, you can rack catch that. You can possession catch that as well if you want to keep it against KOs. Another thing that I like to do, especially if I'm playing like, like cover four, base press dollar basically, is this wheel, streak, tight end post, drag. So the tight end post and drag is going to hold the user in the middle of the field. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to roll out. And with roaming Deadeye, the wheel will clear it out, and you're going to throw this on the sideline. So the way you throw with roaming Deadeye is you're going to hold right trigger. I will show this to you again here. You're going to hold right trigger to roll out, okay? What you're going to do is when you go to throw it, you're just going to let go of right trigger. So you see here I'm, I'm holding it. I let go of it. I throw it. I actually did not let go of it in time. But you want to let go of it, throw it, and you if you have roaming Deadeye, you will get perfect accuracy. I'm not sure if Mahomes actually has that. But you will you will get perfect accuracy if you do have that. And you wanna you obviously want to double team there to the right. But this is a great way to kind of manipulate that dollar defense because a lot of times that pressure is coming off the left side. So when you can go to a setup like this with a double team here, you're able to get out and throw on the sideline like that. So again, I don't think Mahomes has it, but if you have roaming dead eye, that'll be accurate every single time. So that is, oh, and then another play that we didn't talk about yet is a really good play against man. So if you are getting a lot of man coverage, wide trail is probably the best play in the game. So you're going to drag, whoops, I did not mean to do that. Fix that for you. So you're going to drag this guy flat, the outside guy, and then wheel the running back. So the idea here is your your shallow your trail your your tight end trail route's really good if they don't have a yellow zone in the middle of the field that tight end trail route's going to be open so what will happen is the user will have to sit in the middle to defend the tight end trail and the drag right then what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to hit either your real wheel route or your post so you'll see here there's the wheel route you see it gets that step and gets wide open and then you also have your post. Now, kind of back to the uh, the, the setup uh, before about the, the ghost route, what you can also do with Y trail is you can motion this, you can wheel route the running back, but motion him out. And this just kind of changes the spacing a little bit. But what happens is now your post has a lot more room to work on that on that right hand side. So that's another option in which if you wanted to utilize that. To, to again, this is kind of specific to man coverage, uh, but if you wanted to manipulate man coverage even better, you could also do the motion out wheel. I love the motion out running back wheel because sometimes he'll be wide open, right? Sometimes the running back will be wide open here, and then you still have kind of your bomb concept 
you know, that we like. And then obviously your post is going to be cu cutting across the middle of the field. I did want to cover, uh, just because the pressure is so crazy in practice mode, I wanted to cover why trail without a wheel route. So, like, again, this is, this is like if, if you're wanting to try to really get that post route open, I would not put the running back on the wheel um, unless you're, you know, unless, it just, it just kind of clouds it up a little bit. So by doing this, you'll see here, look at the post route, see how much room he has to run. And then he's able to, you know, basically manipulate that man coverage really well. And you can feel free to block your running back too. If you block your running back, it's not going to change anything. That guy's just going to roll back into a middle third anyway. Okay, so I wanted to talk now about uh, kind of the, the third main formation that we want to cover. And this one's a little shorter uh, because we don't go to this a ton, but it is worth covering because it is a supplemental formation. So you would want to, if you know you're going to audible to this, you would want to come out with your bunch to the short side of the field. And then you're going to audible over to trips tight end. The first play we're going to go over is PA crossers. The setup for this is we're going to tight end apprentice corner our tight end. We are going to streak our inside trips receiver, and we're going to drag the outside trips receiver. You can leave the running back and play action, or you can block him. But what's going to happen, this is designed to be a cover three beater. And what you're going to see here is – I can't believe I'm getting sacked like that. Uh, what you're going to see is that that crosser will come right underneath the middle third and will be pretty much wide open. So let me uh, get off the D-line. <laughs> okay, so – and go back to cover three here. So what you see is this middle third. I think I'm going to have to stop calling play action in prax mode. For some reason, the sheds in prax mode, when you call play action, I've noticed, is insane. So, and it's, it's something to do with the contains. But anyways, so you'll see here, and I'll block the running back. So triangle, see how he kind of comes right underneath? That's where you want to throw it. And if you rack catch that, or even possession catch it, it's still going to be a big play. But if you rack catch it, a lot of times that can be a one-play touchdown against cover three. It can be decent against cover four as well. So if I was to run this same setup against cover four, you are still going to get some manipulation of that, of that inside quarter. The harder thing to do here is... It's going to be more of a possession. So you're going to possession catch that. It's still a big play, but you are going to be possession catching that. So it's a really simple read, honestly. Now, one of the things that you will see people do when you run this setup is they will, to kind of, to kind of counter that, they're going to put this guy in a half, and then maybe they even, like, cross man people. Like, this is a pretty common, you know, defense for trips. And so what you want to do when they do that is you want to look to your tight end. So you're always kind of peeking that tight end. If that corner doesn't run with him, we'll just throw that to the sideline, take easy, you know, 15, 20 yards, kind of similar to double post in terms of the way that it works out. Another setup that I really like at a trip tight end that I don't think gets ran enough is the slant post combo. So in this year's game, we're actually going to run a zig drag. And the reason for that is just because, and you can even run it like this, the reason for that is just because slant routes are terrible. But this is going to do a really good job against cover two. So a lot of people like to, you know, maybe go cover two, especially on the tight end side. What you'll see here is this deep post route is going to be a big play for you if they run that coverage. So that's the beauty of this play setup against kind of a standard way a lot of people like to defend trips. So this is going to kind of move them back into the cover three. And then... Once we get them to move kind of back into cover three, then your tight end post, your high lows are going to be much, much more open. So you see here, tight end post, wide open, take it, easy yardage, right? So while trips tight end is not a super deep scheme in this offense, it's actually a super, it's still a super good scheme. So the slant post is really good. Because we have uh, this X underplay, another setup we can do here is just a simply a streak, a tight end drag, and then you can block your running back if you want. But basically what this is going to do is we're going to motion this corner in, and this is going to space out really well and create just that high-low on that trip side. 
and that corner route is 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 pretty much wide open to be thrown. So you have that high low there, and then um, the other one that is not called enough and should be called more is this setup right here. This is just a high low to the right. If you want to put the running back on a table, you certainly can. This just spaces the field out really, really, really well. As you can see, that crawl, if they play cover four, that crosser can be kind of a problem. That's where I like to go to this setup as well, and I think this is a pretty decent one. But it's just verticals, and then we're going to take the running back. We're going to put him on a streak, put the tight end on a corner, and then from there – Kind of leave it as it is, or if you wanted to, you could do the flat zig and then the deep in. This is a really good combo out of trips this year, and it's really good for manipulating kind of that that coverage that we showed, the cup, basically the shade down, shade down cover four. If you want to be a good trips tight end player, you need to be attacking the, the tight end side. You need to be playing games on the tight end side. So like X under has a little bit of a deeper corner route that you can throw. So if you wanted to use that, you certainly can do that. And then the flat zig combo with the backside dig is so good. So you have this little flat little zig. And then you see how the tight end is going to get cleared out. And we're going to be able to throw it. Now, the tight end, the way to throw the tight end route it is really important. The way that we throw this tight end route is the short corner is better for cover four. The deeper corner is better for cover two. So if it's kind of the tendency based. But you're just throwing this with a free form down into the outside. And you see how you can kind of possession catch that on the sideline and be able to take what the defense gives you that way as well. The other thing that we have in this play is this RPO alert screen. So a lot of people like to base press on their dollar or 6-1. This is really good for that. And all you're going to do is just throw the screen. The screen is almost always available. It's very difficult to stop. And in a no huddle situation, this can be one of the better plays in the game. Another thing that I like to do, especially against my 6-1 guys, is this is where we'll start to institute this RPO read bubble. So as you see here, we have this little R icon over the slot corner. If that R icon is over the slot corner or the outside linebacker, they will always blitz. So you'll wait on him to blitz, and then you'll throw your bubble screen, and now it's two on one with two lead blockers and a, and a runner in the open field. So that's a great way to use that combo as well. And then trip side and offset weak. I think one of the more underrated plays in this formation is this halfback power or the RPO pin bubble uh, because you get this pulling guard. It's kind of like a base run, super good. So you want to be using that as well. And then the other thing that you can do from trip side and offset is you can still do some of your cool, um, you know, some of your main plays such as, you know, basically just this. And I would repost the tight end, but it's basically just, you know, it's that same idea of, of shallow cross concept with that tight end post and then the backside drag. And you don't have to keep the play action. You can block the running back, right? Another really good trips tight end combo. This is more of a freestyle combo. You can do it out of trips tight end offset or trips tight end offset weak is to utilize a C route. So by using the C route here, this is going to act as a corner route. And then basically what we can do is, um, you know, like, like in this situation, for example, we can drag the tight end, right? And then we could block the running back, something like this, something simple. It just creates that high-low on that left deep sideline, which is super hard for them to use her. So those are ways that we're getting to be able to, again, Madden and offense in general is all about attacking space, creating space, putting – kind of points on the field and being able to manipulate and attack that. So that's how I like to use trips tight end and trips tight end offset week. Uh, this trips tight end offset week is not the – it's okay. I feel like there's this this formation lacks a little bit um, just in terms of like really good passing plays. you know. But one simple one would be something like this. I mean, this is a simple combo, but it's really effective. It's a little mesh in the middle. You've got the tight end post. You've got the drag. You, you have you have opportunities, right? So that's that's another one that I like to utilize. If we go back to this X under play um, or just trip side in in general, one thing I like to be able to do, and you, you get it more if you can get them into a cover two or cover three, I just really like to attack the right side. So when they start to deep half, which is pretty popular, this X under play with the running back streak, is going to be wide open. So what you'll see here, and I did not mean to run commit, 
the the tight end is going to be wide open to the side. And this is – it's more so for like a standard cover two. So if you start to see them running a lot of standard cover two with a cloud flat on that right-hand side, they're kind of rolling their coverage over the trip side – this route combo right here is really effective for that, or something simple like this is really effective. You have that seam streak on the right, and then as you can see, see how deep that tight end corner gets? It's going to get over the top of any kind of press cloud flat. It's really good if they deep half. One other thing I wanted to say um, about cover like three and cover four, and we didn't really get into the vertical setup yet, but just put the tight end on a corner, put the running back on an in route or a Texas pattern, a lot of times what happens is there's this window to throw. Matt, Matt Hook Curl kind of messed it up, but I'll show you kind of a popular trips defense a lot of people like to use, and we'll kind of explain why this is really good. So if they go to – if if um, let me go back to cover three. So if this defender here is in the middle third and this guy's manned up on triangle, this is really popular. It leaves a lot of space kind of right in front of the tight end which is where their user is, but their user is going to have to go guard the running back route. And so their user kind of goes to that running back route, and then this can be thrown for a possession catch kind of right in that little window. So that's how I like to utilize trips tight in um, in terms of, you know, just kind of using that, that formation as a supplemental formation. And now I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about the red zone. So the red zone in Madden is really typically about the 15 to 10-yard line and in. It's the hardest place to score on the field, and it's why you want to be running the ball if possible. A lot of people are going to be in 4-3, even 6-1, typically are going to have 20-yard curl flats to play defense against this. So the easiest thing to do is throw this bubble screen. If they're not respecting that, that's going to be open. So it's important to understand how are they going to stop the bubble screen. The main way they're going to stop the bubble screen is man it up. So they're going to put this guy in main coverage on the bubble screen, and then they're going to try to shoot the stretch. A lot of times this stretch can get, get the job done, and you can just run it in, right? But another thing that you can do that's really underrated is because they're going to be manning this guy up, they might throw a hard flat and a purple like that. That might be a legitimate adjustment they do. Then what you can do here is you could go to the zone alert bubble, and sometimes this can get the job done for you with a juke inside because that linebacker runs out of the left side gap to be able to fend this. Okay, so that's important. Those are a couple different methods. Another thing that you can do is you can always try the dive. I don't think there's any problem with like trying that on a first and five or first and goal. But really the main thing that we like to do when we really want to come down and run the ball is we're going to audible into – into this wing tight if I can find it single back wing tight and we're going to run the stretch and specifically we're going to run the stretch to the left single back wing tight with stretch to the left is super super good because you can kind of juke inside right there and kind of juke inside right there maybe slightly sooner than that but basically the juke inside is going to get the job done for you the single the stretch is super good um yeah I, I can't overestimate like this is really hard for the six one to stop Again, just the juke right there. So, yeah, a juke and then the kind of your momentum will carry you forward into the end zone oftentimes. Another thing is let's say they come out in goal line or really just any defense. I find this jet sweep, what you're going to do is you're going to snap it, and when you get the ball, you're going to immediately jurtle up into the end zone. So you're going to hit juke upfield into the end zone. Really good method for scoring down here in the red zone it doesn't need to be that much more complicated than that this pa tight end scissors is worth at least mentioning uh what i like to do with this play is i'm going to curl this uh, r1 player i'm going to block my tight end i'm going to put a smart right of post and a backside in and basically we're going to roll out and we're either looking for that backside post or we're going to run the ball in with our quarterback okay so typically you'll be able to just run the ball in with your quarterback but you, you do want to kind of, you know, ideally just at least be aware of this. And then you can do some things with, like, motion as well. So, like, you can motion this guy out, you know, and then run your stretch if you wanted to do that. Um, another thing that you could do is you could go with this – this um, I go the wing tight, I think. the the So, let's say they, like, spread their linebackers. You can go 26 duo. And 26 duo, juke inside, and a lot of times you'll be able to kind of cut that, you know, basically right in the end zone. 
And that's really it. I mean, there's not like in Madden 24, there really just isn't a lot of good. Um, there, there is. So like what you could do with your pass, right. Is you could corner route Kelsey. You can hitch this guy here and motion him out, block your running back. See how I'm having to do a lot. And then I'm having to do all this. And sometimes this will still get picked off, but a lot of times this corner is going to be wide open as you see. So, I would generally advise running the ball, working this this um, RP this zone week. I think this zone week's really a good run, and you find a lot of people can't stop the run like they think they can. Guys, I want to thank you for watching this Colts offensive ebook. I hope that this was helpful and effective for you. If you guys want to learn all of the stuff that I know about Madden, join our school.com community. It's uh, school.com slash Cody Ballard. Link's going to be in the description. For just $10, you're going to get access to all of our offensive and defensive eBooks. And we're getting ready for Madden 25 and, and college football 25. So a lot of stuff, a lot of content coming out over there on that page to get you ready for those games.